Next up, we've got Brian Kenny. Brian is the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at Harvard Business School. Brian is in charge of marketing uh, for Harvard Business School globally, including the MBA program, executive education, online external relations, and Harvard Business School publishing. And Brian produces an exciting podcast for Harvard Business School called Cold Call. Our back to school study highlighted that parents believe academic performance is more important now than ever. 56% of parents stated that they felt getting good grades is more important than it was before COVID. And that number was just at 9% last year. So pretty big shift. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. That's a great introduction. You have a great intro voice. She sure does. Brian, real pleasure. Brian, so, I mean, for you, the first place I go is like, ooh, huh? You know, it just feel, you know, like. Do I look like that? Wait a second. Do I look exhausted? You, you, you actually look so good. I'm like, am I overstating how much of a challenge I think this must have been over the last 12 weeks? I mean, you know, for me and my businesses, it was up front. Clients not paying, cli- you know, like so much. It was like so hardcore. For you, for you, it, it was within a season, a season, a semester, you know. But to think about when the realization was, uh oh, our September or our August might be challenged here, whether that was April or May or June. You know, just a very, you know, I think almost everybody watching because we do have a very diverse audience, and I'm always trying to find angles and use the last person or this and that. But I almost think for everybody, we'd all be curious on how much of a challenge this has been. And then obviously, you, your organization institution was one of the first to say we're going virtual and you know it's got one of the most iconic brands in the world that you're in charge of and I'm sure there was some interesting feedback and backlash on like wait you got to pay that much for virtual so like just a lot I mean an open-ended first five minutes of like how are you doing and what's going on yeah it's been it's been a pretty wild ride Um, and you know people use the word unprecedented and I feel like it's becoming trivialized because we use it a lot but really this is unprecedented I think And, you know, Harvard is obviously just one of, I mean, every higher ed institution is going through the same set of challenges that we've gone through. Everybody's finding the best way for them to deal with it. At Harvard Business School, we have been committed really going back to last spring after commencement. Our dean made it clear we want to bring our students back uh, on campus in September. We need to find a way to do that. And the whole school has mobilized around that vision and that challenge. And I I think, you know, now we're in the, with the thick of it, right? We started to have students come back last week. We get the lion's share back next week and and we already started classes this week. So we'll learn a lot in the next few weeks about how well prepared we were uh, and what we, what we maybe didn't think about in that process. Uh, It's amazing. You know, if you think about a college campus, it's like a small town. Uh, and so everybody in their own town, their own city, wherever they live is, is seeing how, uh, how administrators deal with all of the pieces, the moving parts that need to be thought about in a situation like this. You know, we have a, a residential community on our campus. They have to be fed. We have to make sure that our facilities are able to support them. But our primary goal here is to do this in a way that's safe for everybody that's coming back because the last thing we want to do is have them come back and face a situation where we have to shut down. Some of that's within our control. Uh, much of it is not, you know, uh, yeah. the city of Boston, we, we have 200,000 college students coming That's back right. to all the different universities. And uh, it's everybody's collective responsibility to do what they need to do <clears throat> to allow all the schools to keep operating. We've seen this play out badly in some other places already over the last few weeks. And we've seen places reverse course. We hope that's not the case here. But even, even like- you know what's challenging about this? I'm sorry to interject. No, right. I've been thinking about this a ton. Even if you crush it up front and really cross your T's and I's, you know, I, I, I always, I've had this rule and I was very affected by the passing of Len Bias, the basketball player in Maryland from a yeah. drug overdose. Cause it was a prime, you know, as a kid, it was just like. It, I and remember I it well, it was, was going to be a Celtic. That's absolutely correct. Uh, very tragic. Um, and it was a drug overdose. And I, I remember just feeling, even as a child, I guess I had this that ended up being my career, this feeling like everything changed after that. And I, I think a lot about this right now. I, I've always called it the Len Bias rule in my mind of like when a moment happens, how does everything change? And I was thinking about, you were just talking, I'm like, man, if, if they and every other university in this incredible college town of Boston do everything right, 
History looks at it. Unbelievable. The greatest T's and I's of all time. There's still the possibility of a single college student dying, God forbid, and it just gets everyone's emotions on tilt and it, it, that's it. It's just like, you know, to me, I feel like everybody that's going back to school is in play. I have kids in private school in Manhattan and I'm, and I'm laughing is the word I would use of like how everybody thinks this is gonna happen. The second a single child under the age of 15 in the private school ecosystem in Manhattan has something of any scare, let alone something devastating, they're all shutting down. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, it's interesting, the the, the parallel that came to mind as you were talking about that, and I think you're absolutely right, is automated driving, right? So we've got, you know, this push towards, uh, you know, self-driving vehicles, and you have one incident where uh, somebody gets killed. That's already happened a couple of times, and Tesla has had to face that. And and then, you know, the the pushback against automation in all forms. So there's that. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the data is far greater than letting us do it ourselves. And it's the same, it's emotion over math. But I think what happens, you know, and brands, uh, this is an important, you know, thing for CMOs to think about is how do brands respond when those kinds of challenges face you? And, you know, so how will Harvard Business School respond if we have to reverse course and go back and shut things down again? Um, you know, and we've talked a lot about that. And, you know, we would want to do yeah. do so in a way that's very consistent with the mission of the school. We're not going to stop teaching. We might change the modality for how we're doing it. But we have to make sure that we continue to deliver on that promise that we made to our students to the best of our ability in the current situation. And Brian, uh, do, you f- do you feel like there's, you know, I've historically had my own points of view on college and different things and structure and really more on an individual basis because there's no right or wrong to anything. It's individuality. But, you know, so much of the HBS, I mean, I, I interact with hundreds of HBS individuals over the last 10 years where they just talk about enormity around the serendipity of who was in their class, you know, all that, like how much pushback and challenge are you getting from the individuals writing these nice size checks for that experience that if they have to go and do it in their own apartment, feel like they might be missing all of the, you know, for a lot of people, the added value is the value. I'm sure that's been a challenge, right? Yeah, it's very true. I mean, a, a huge part of the graduate school experience, especially at a place like Harvard, is that network that you build, those social relationships that you develop. That's a big reason why people come there. And, you know, we've got 1,500 students coming back. We normally have 1,800 MBA students. So only a few hundred have opted to not be on campus. And some of them just because they can't get visas or whatever, they can't get there. It's not, it's not their decision. They would probably be there if they could. So I think they recognize the importance of this moment which is if they can come back and follow the rules that we put in place, the safe and healthy procedures, if they can avoid large gatherings, if they can do those things, they can get a lot of the effect that you're talking about, Gary. They can still develop those connections. It'll just be done in a different way. By the and way, they one, see one, the one, but you know what's funny, Brian? I was just sitting here. One could argue maybe even better. Yeah, in some ways, yeah. So this is a almost like a trench-like experience, right? They're in the mm-hmm. trenches together. They're dealing with this at this very unique moment in history. And I think they sense the, the, momentous, uh, the momentousness of that. So I'm really optimistic about how our students are going to respond to this just based on the early signals that we're getting from the students that are already on campus. Talk to me about cold call. I want to take this opportunity to make sure a lot of people that are watching find a new podcast they fall in love with. I... Uh, I, I'm funny. I don't consume a lot of content in the world. I consume people consuming content. So I spend all my time trying to understand what's happening. And so it's really weird. I always tread lightly when I talk about things that are actual shows or podcasts because almost all of my opinions of it are formed by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people's opinions through their commentary because I spend almost all my time anthropology, social listening. There's such an incredible... Yeah. Uh, vibe towards your podcast. So, A, congrats on that. Um, Thank you. And it, you're taking, you know, I always judge the judger. This is really what I do. So I'm, I'm excited to deliver that for you. And I hope it carries some weight. But more importantly, how would you describe it? And, and, and why should people maybe consider to add it to their repertoire? Yeah, thank you for giving me a chance to talk about it. So Cold Call is actually about to have its fifth birthday in September. We're really psyched about that. 130 episodes, you know, every two weeks without fail. Uh, over the past five years. And basically, uh, Harvard Business School teaches by the case method. That's what we're known for. So uh, our faculty write business cases, and that's what we teach in the classroom. And so cold call is really turning the tables on the faculty member, because the way they start a class is, they'll walk in and say, Gary, 
start the case for us. And if you haven't read that case, that's a terrible moment in your life that you'll remember forever. Uh, and that's the one thread that ties all of our generations of, of alumni together is that cold call. So the name is really a wink and a nod to our alumni, but the discussion is, tell us, you know, Mr. Faculty, why, why did you write this case? What are the, what's between the lines? What motivates you to do it? What are the big takeaways that people listening can get from this case? It's a 20 minute sort of business uh, lesson. And, uh, you know, it, it, people, I think, connect to it because our cases are highly relevant uh, to the current day, the current business practices, and our faculty are passionate about what they do. Uh, so to hear them talk about it really humanizes them in a way that humanizes the brand. And that's why we came up with the concept in the first place. We wanted the people to see how relatable our faculty were and how relevant the research they do is in the world. You feel like it humanized them because when we all, like the brand is so powerful that for too many, like for 99%, you know, at some level or 90%, there's an unapproachable seems just above, you know, there's a lot of people that have self esteem issues and feel like I can't hang in that world. Do you think it just, it thawed out some of those aspects of the brand? I really hope it does because our faculty, I think, you know, for a long time, mystique was the thing that worked for Harvard Business School and that's just not the case today. We have to be transparent. We have to have our authentic voice come through and our faculty are the best example and our students too. We, you know, we, we feature our students in our social media all the time because we want people to see that they're not arrogant and they're not elitist and they're not a lot of the negative right. connotations that people have right. about the brand. The only way to do that, the best way to do it is to bring their voices right to the surface and cold call helps us do that. Right, just a random, random thing that I'm, you're just inspiring me by this talk. What's the most interesting thing you've learned about yourself during COVID? Is there anything that pops to mind? You know, I think, yeah, probably consistent with what you'd hear from a lot of people is it's made me stretch muscles that I didn't know I had. And which you know, ones of those muscles do you like or are surprised that you're good at? Um, I would say I was concerned about keeping my team motivated. So my team is still remote. We're going to continue to be remote probably till January, maybe beyond. At least, yeah. And I think the challenge that leaders face across the board is how do you keep people feeling connected when they're dispersed? How do you help them feel, you know, excited about what they're doing day in and day out? Even I felt unmotivated, you know, I would wake up on a Monday morning and say, oh my God, what day is it? And, you know, there's a, you can get into this malaise. And I think uh, I've learned that, you know, there are things that I can do to help people feel connected. And a lot of that is just sort of blocking and tackling, hand-to-hand, one-to-one, uh, you know, interaction with the people who you lead with your team, picking up the phone, calling them, that kind of stuff really goes a long way. It's just that individual recognition. Uh, and, you know, you have to make time for it and you have to put an emphasis on it. And so um, I think I've been able to, to do that pretty well. I feel like my team is still fully engaged and excited. And there's no shortage of stuff for us to do. We're working as hard as we ever have. Uh, and, and our work is really important to the school. So I, I always remind them of that. I appreciate it. We appreciate having you on. Hey, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it, Gary. We'll talk soon, Brian. Thanks.